Alrighty, in this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to import the EPS file that you've saved in Separation Studio. We're going to go ahead and import that into the CorelDRAW environment. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and launch CorelDRAW. And you'll see the very first thing we want to do after we go ahead and create a new blank document here, we're going to go to the File drop-down menu, and we're going to select the Import option. Now, of course, the keyboard shortcut is Control-I, so we can go ahead and call up the Import dialog. What I want to do is browse to the file that we've created inside of Separation Studio. So if you recall, when we're in Sep Studio, if we go File, Save As, we can name our file, but it's always going to save as an EPS file format. Now, an EPS format can save vector data and digital bitmap data. It's going to save all that separation information that Separation Studio is calculating. So what I'm going to do is double-click my file, or I can click the Import dialog. And we're going to get this prompt. This is an EPS import filter. Now here, what we want to do is select the bottom most option, which is place as encapsulated postscript. This is extremely important. So I'll go ahead and make that selection. I'll go ahead and click OK. And what we can do now is if I left mouse click, it's going to go ahead and apply my file to my workspace. Now I want to point out uh, that the rule of thumb is you should always you know, take your original graphic and size it for the size that you want to output when you go to production. So if I know that I want to print something and I want it to be 8 by 10, you, know, you want to make sure that you size your original graphic 8 by 10, you separate it 8 by 10, you save it from Separation Studio as an 8 by 10, and then you can import it into CorelDRAW with that production file size in mind. So you would just left mouse click. But I do want to point out, let's say we have a huge file, it's large, maybe it's a, you know, the 8 by 10, but we're going to print it maybe on the front of a garment and it's going to be smaller. So I can left mouse click and I can drag and I can actually resize using this dialog here. So I'll go ahead and reposition this now, let go and that's been resized for me. So just want to point out you have two options uh, when placing your file. Now let's say that this was really large. By default CorelDRAW gives us an 8.5 by 11 background. Well what I can do is I can double click on the shadow that follows the right hand side of the page. That allows me to resize my workspace. So I could go in here and enter 11 by 11, click OK, and you're going to see how my page now is resized. So go ahead and position my graphic. Of course you're going to want to insert your separation marks. But let me show you how to call up and get your document colors, meaning the colors that are actually in this file. Now remember, Separation Studio is going to prepare this with spot colors. So what I want to do is I want to access those because I'm going to share a tip with you. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to the File drop-down menu, and I'm going to click on the Print dialog. And what you're going to notice, look at the Preflight tab, it's Thinking. And so CorelDRAW, uh, we're going to get prompted with this little dialog here. What we need to do is click OK. Now you're going to click OK for every single color that's in your file. So in this case, I have a five color, five spot color file job. So what I'm going to do is click OK five times. Go ahead and uh, again go through these prompts. Just click OK. That's all you have to do. Go ahead and just cancel out of this print dialog here. So I'm just going to click cancel. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to the Windows drop down. I'll go to color palettes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select document palette. So again, Windows, color palettes, and I'm going to go ahead and select document palettes. Now you'll see on the right hand side we have a new color palette here. These are the colors that are in this file. Now you can see uh, as I hover my mouse it tells me what color it is and this is in the right print sequence. So we have our base white, red, gold, green, and then the highlight or the top white. So you can see those spot colors now. Now in the event that these don't populate or appear, what you can do is go back to the Windows dialog and depending on your version of CorelDRAW you may have to toggle on and off the document palette function. So you can see here there's a check mark. What I can do is turn that off. I can come back to Windows, Color Palettes, and turn on document palettes once more to force it through. Now I do recommend that you always update and stay in the most recent update of CorelDRAW, the current most service pack. So you can always go to the Help drop-down menu in CorelDRAW and select Updates. And if you have the, the most recent updates, when you do go to call up your document palette, it should appear immediately. So here's the spot color files that are involved. Now, again, the reason uh, that this is so important is I can take text and I can add text on top of my separated file. I could add different vector elements into the background. And really the value of this is I can take advantage of the spot color, uh, you know, colors that are being used in my design, and I can assign that to produce crisp, you know, vector text. So I'm going to, you know, change the size or change the style of uh, font being deployed, and I'll change the size. And what I could do is I can click one time on one of these spot colors and assign that to that vector text or the vector shapes that I want to take advantage of. Again, this is going to give you way more quality when dealing with text. So if you can, if you have the ability to, you know, and you're controlling the design, you're going to want to separate the digital elements and then try to preserve the vector elements and layer those on at this stage in the workflow. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now, again, you know, make sure you have your, your separation marks. We can go back to CorelDRAW, go File, click on Print, click on the Color tab, and make sure that we have Print Separation selected. And of course, we can now output this through your RIP software. And that's the process for importing an EPS file produced inside of Separation Studio and how to work with that inside of CorelDRAW.